I feel like I've come a long way in just a year. Whilst being 24 years old has felt different, I look much the same. Same long hair, same John Lennon glasses, but I very, very nearly have a full beard. It wasn't the derma rollers or zinc tablets, or even squeezing my face before bed that did it, but patience. It's not something I'm particularly talented in, but age 24, the need for patience has cropped up a lot. Like when Angela and I had to wait nearly six months to find a flat. We viewed as many properties as we could in between our full-time jobs, only to be rejected, most likely because I'm freelance. And when we finally and miraculously moved in together, we had to stay patient through the months it took of painting and redecorating, the countless trips to Ikea, and finding furniture that'll last, all whilst trying to work enough to pay rent. But we've been so fortunate to get to redecorate our rented place, to really make it feel like our home. It's maybe smaller than where we've lived before, but it's cosy and unapologetically ours, full of plants and plants and also plants. I'm so grateful for, as we call it, the greenhouse. I'm proud of our living room, where I can read and journal whilst watching the sunrise, or binge Queer Eye and hear about Angie's day at work before bed. If anything, I need to spend less time in this room and get outside into that tasty vitamin D a little bit more. I'm also super grateful to finally have my own office, a place for all my film kit, my standing desk, and to lose myself in client work and personal projects. I sometimes feel a bit of an imposter to have this space all to myself, but I'm learning to look at it as the fruit of all my hard work. It's in here that I'm working with genuinely lovely clients on some exciting long-term projects, but it's also the home for my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It is funny, I sort of fell into Yu-Gi-Oh cards in lockdown as a hobby to escape work, yet I'm now frequently working with a Yu-Gi-Oh YouTuber. It feels like my inner child and the bill-paying, bread-baking adult self meeting in the middle and shaking hands. It has taken over my life a tad though, and I've noticed some space between myself and the film. Looking back at it, it sort of feels like a bit of a film rut. I'm just not watching as many films as I did whilst a student or whilst living with the film bros, and that's something I definitely like to change moving forward. My favourite films I have watched at 24, however, are Sound of Metal, Evil Dead, and of course, Bo Burnham's Inside. I think I can forgive myself for not watching so much though. I've perhaps shifted a bit from being a consumer to creating myself more. I dedicated months towards editing, directing, and co-writing a short film with my friend and super talented dancer Liam, and our little short went to Buffer Festival in London. The dream has come true. Screening something at Buffer has been one of my biggest goals for years, and our work being shown at the ruddy Odeon in Leicester Square is just overwhelming and kind of baffling. I'm so grateful to have been part of such an awesome and dedicated team. Beyond that, I've had an odd time with creating my own work, and I'm learning that finding the time and energy to create for myself when overwhelmed with paid work is a skill in itself. And maybe I'm still burnt out, working myself too hard for other people's dreams and not my own. We're going on holiday next week for my actual B-Day day, and I'm looking forward to resting and properly relaxing, letting the creative batteries replenish. It's predicted to rain the entire time, so we'll likely get to sleep and read lots. I've been loving my books, and read about 45 books in 2021, but in 2022 I'm going to prioritise quality over quantity. My favourite books read at 24 are A Book of Secrets by Darren Brown, Normal People by John Legend, and Good Girl by Angela Innes. From these books, I'm learning a lot about acceptance, and how little regular steps can make more of a difference than a grand, singular stride, and a lot about the way my mind converts everything into stories. In fact, I've learned a lot about my mental health this year. Some simple things that can help on a daily basis or to help ground myself, but I've also had some pretty big revelations that I'm not quite sure how to explain or formulate online quite yet. It's been ultimately great and done wonders for me though. It sort of feels like putting on glasses for the first time and realising how far I couldn't see before. And I had to stay patient in my wait to find the right glasses, but now I've got them I'm grateful I can start seeing clearer. Whilst I'm doing better, the same can't be said for C-3PO, who is very much on his last legs. A few friends have suggested I burn and or bury him, but I'm not quite ready to let that part of me go just yet. I have moved on from the iconic blue coat though, which has been succeeded by a darker, larger and otherwise identical coat. I'm considering this a reflection of my own maturing and entering this new stage of my life, because in a week's time I'll be a quarter of a century old, which is terrifying. I feel a bit of an imposter calling myself 25. I still get these nervous pangs where I feel behind in life, and no longer being able to get 24 and under tickets at my favourite cinema isn't exactly going to help that. But I remember that what I've achieved, where I am, and who I'm sharing my time with is something to be immensely grateful for. Despite so much, I truly feel like I found my footing. I spent a lot of my younger 20s trying to be this ideal version of myself, and foolishly thinking the best way to do so was to be tough on myself and self-critical. I think the reality was that I needed to let go of this ideal self and allow myself to naturally become who I'm meant to be. That sounds like a poorly paraphrased TEDx talk quote, but 
I stand by it. And yes, going forward there are areas I want to improve upon. I'd like to exercise more again, to get outside more each day, and my filmmaking and creativity would certainly benefit if I could shake this fear of making mistakes. But I'm not going to bully myself into improvement anymore. Instead, I'll act with gratitude, with patience, and with a sensible amount of pride. I'll accept that I'm heading in the right direction, while seeing that who I am now is pretty great. Because I've come a long way, even in just a year.